Now we shall move on to the assessment. Um, after the screening, you can take a history. Right? This is very, very important because I know that even amongst our trainees in psychiatry, they jump straight into the DSM. The DSM, for those who are not familiar with this American uh, diagnostic criteria, is the Diagnostic Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association, a very powerful manual for the diagnosis of, of uh, psychiatric illnesses. This is in America, to, to, to before you can, you can uh, send your, the bill to the insurance agent, you must tell them the number. So initially, this was meant for the insurance company. You know? A friend of mine named Bob uh, Robert Spitzer from New York uh, spent his time refining the DSM. In fact, he asked me to do the fifth one with him. Um, and, but he laments that even in America, the, the, the students forget or candidates forget the history. They just go straight into the checklist. If you have this, you have this, you have this, you have dementia. But he's alarmed that often, if you take a history, it may not be dementia. Just six months ago, a registrar in medicine rang me and said, one of our professor's wife has dementia. The professor retired now. I went up to see her in NUH, and I saw her, and I said, this is not dementia. You know, patients was, she was quite well on, on Friday, and on Saturday, Saturday uh, uh, she had, 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 had visual hallucination, forgetful. I said, the patient is having a delirium. But look at the history, there's some changes uh, a month ago. A month ago, she slowed down, not eating well, forgetful. And then she went to see a doctor in Mount E. The doctor in Mount E diagnosed her correctly as a depression. So depression is sometimes called pseudo-dementia. But unfortunately, she was given Prozac for depression. And as some of you may remember, in a small print in Prozac, Prozac can cause hyponatremia, or lowering of the sodium that trigger the delirium. So I told the, 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 uh, the registrar, take off the Prozac, change to a different antidepressant, and, you, and she will recover. It's not a dementia. So taking the history is very, very important. And also a physical examination, because some of them may have mixed edema, and sometimes de el a dementia may be part of a history of alcoholism, alcohol dementia. And also blood investigation often done, sometimes B12 deficiency, I seen one three months ago uh, from a home, elderly person with home B12 deficiency. And we also published a, uh, a paper in American Journal about two months ago that even for patients with almost normal B12 but with an ApoE4 abnormality in the genes, they are more prone to develop, develop cognitive decline. Imaging, now there's some controversy. Some people in, in NIH feel that, should, that everyone should have an MRI scanning. You know, I, some, have you all been to MRI chamber? It's a bit frightening, isn't it? And for old people, it's a frightening experience, and, and sometimes it's very costly. So I wouldn't mind they have a CAT scan. I know in the, in the uh, guidelines, so if you feel that maybe a, a, a MRI scanning is more, more appropriate, CAT scan, be, from my point of view, more than enough. You know. uh, but for research, people, people might want to use a, 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 a MRI. Now, for this, I think maybe it's not appropriate for, it's in the you know, guidelines, not appropriate for, the, for primary care. It's assessment of the behavioral problems. NPI is the Neuropsychiatric uh, Inventory uh, constructed by um, Jeffrey Cummings, who will be here next month in Singapore, um, and also behaved by Barry Reisberg. And this is for meaningful researchers. We have used, I've used this, New Yorker's instrument, assessment of, of the behavior problems. Now, um, then you come to the DSM. Most hospitals will use the ICD. You know? So if you tell them about DSM, some of your, your administrators will be rather upset with you. But I, I think for, if you want to publish in the research journal for people who are working uh, in hospital doing work, research work, you probably have to be DSM. Someone earlier on asked me, there was a research that we did some years ago when I was the CEO at IMH. We did a big national health survey, and they said the figure shows that it's a bit higher than the, the, your figures. Mainly because the IMH study, when I was down there, it was done, after I left, it was continued, then the SARS came. You know. So many of, them, many, of us did, many of them did the initial part of it, but there was no physical investigation done, and blood investigation wasn't done. So it was, the figure's a bit high, so, but without... Physical examination and investigation, in fact, we found it very difficult to publish the data in, in, in big journals of the world. Now, this slide, you can't see probably, you can see it slightly. Um, the way you see the pictures depends on, on the neurochemistry of your limbic system, what if, how you feel now, your emotion. Emotion often interprets what's in the picture itself. So if you are feeling very depressed now, morose, or, or despondent, you say, oh, this looks like sunset. But if you were someone like, say, John Macian, who is top of the world now, happy as a lark because the work is done, you say, wow, this looks like morning. 
So in fact, this is dawn. You know, uh, I shot this picture, the crack of dawn, uh, some uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, in 1984, when I first started research in dementia, there was so so much pessimism. Nobody was keen to do anything on dementia. You know, there's even therapeutic nihilism. But now there are lots of advances. Now I'm very glad, and. Um, my colleagues in UCLA uh, doing other studies on stem cell. Here in Singapore, we have a big group we call the Gerontology Research Program. We're basic scientists, and you know, some of you are part of the clinical group, and we're making great advances. It's very important because the clinicians play a big role. The research data is important for our guidelines for Singapore. You know, because sometimes, uh, um, and over across in, in the, the causeway, they ask me to help them with their guidelines. And it, it's more a, a cut and paste kind of thing from other countries. But now they improve them, they use their own data. And similarly, here in Singapore, we've got to modify something relevant for, own peop- for, the, for doctors here. But often in Singapore, we say, oh, we must borrow from America or, or England. You know? You know, even we call their researchers whales. And our local researchers like Wixiong, Guppies, you know. So it's, it's always this thing. But there are lots of things being done here by our researchers. There's our relevance, you know. And some of us, on our research, we've been used even by the World Health. I'll tell you something very interesting because uh, 25 years ago, uh, the Faculty of Medicine was here in, in the SGH campus. My room was just around the corner down there. In the evening, sometime I joined Professor Xia Jingxiang for his grand rounds. And one day, Prof. Xia told me, uh, Yi Hyok, can you help me with my patients? Because Prof. Sia was an expert in liver diseases. He told me, most of my patients, in fact, have alcoholism, alcohol problem. Can you, I heard you're trained also in alcohol treatment in England. Can you help me with my patients? So I said, okay. I will. So he referred to me about 70 patients of his. And then I conceived a, a, a treatment program, uh, um, and I carry on the research with the NUH. In fact, Dr. Tien also helped me out a bit down the corner down there. And after a year follow-up, I wrote up the data and sent it to England for publication in the British Journal. It was published in the British Journal, and it caused a stir in the world of psychiatry and addiction medicine because the outcome of addiction treatment in, in Singapore was better than in London. I was invited to London for, to give a lecture, and at the end of the lecture, the professor from Sheffield stood up and said, we are so delighted. We don't hear very much about Asian uh, clinicians telling us their data, their work. You know. But what you've told us is of relevance in our guidelines on how to manage people with alcohol dependence. Because in London, in, they have a big team of 40 people. We have only about three. Uh, Tien was our MO, registrar. Few of us, and we got better results. You know. And he, asked, he told me something very interesting. He told er- everyone that, do you all know that the big journals of the world, Nature, Lancet, BMJ, Science, 92% of the world publication come from North America and Europe. The rest of the world, just 8%. Japan, 2%. Asia, just 2%. So what happened to Asia? Asia has half the world's population, and your contribution to science is only 2%. Well, I told him that, well, in Asia, we work very hard. Uh, when I was working in England, in Oxford, and also in America, at, at Harvard, I only see two patients a morning. So in Singapore, I see 20. When I see you at Woodbridge, I think Dr. Chiam sees 40 patients. You know. How do you have time? And I also told them that sometimes the editors of your journals are very biased. You, know. you get a paper coming from Tan Tok Singh, NUH, you can just kill him off. You know. A paper come from Johns Hopkins or Cambridge, before you kill him off, you think a second time. You know. So your, your editors and referees are sometimes very biased. When I came back home, the, ed- the editor of the British Journal wrote me a note. You know. Uh, yeah, Dr. Kwa, I heard your comments. Um, and could you write an editorial for the British Journal? What you said about the, the refereeing is being very unfair. You know, that the world is, I told him, yes, the world is, is, is not flat. You know, yeah. um, so that's what I wrote to him in the, the, editor, uh, the editorial of the British Journal. And um, it's called The Ethics of Refereeing Reexamined. And I said the marketplace for ideas should not merely be sacrosanct to research centres in London or New York ignoring the rich experience of clinicians from Kathmandu or Batu Pahat. This is, this is the first time my hometown of Malaysia has been mentioned in a respectable medical journal. Often, Batu Pahat is mentioned is a very sleazy town, you know, in prostitution, addiction. At the, uh, the mayor and the, the minister of health is from Batu Pahat, my, my classmate, very glad. You know. But I'm trying to impress upon you that the clinicians play a very big role in, in guidelines and uh, in research and able to formulate guidelines. 
So I hope when you receive this guideline, you don't go back home and put it in the, sh in the bookshelf and forget about it, but you will inundate Zhang Mie-Sien with, with uh, your emails and your questions, and hopefully when, when Mr. Pui, uh, Dr. Pui, in five years, assemble a new team, you will still keep her as the chairperson. Thank you very much.